It's Bigfoot Collectors Club with Bryce and Michael. <laughs> I know a ghost story or two. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Oh, yeah. Don't you just feel that? Yeah, yeah. Every, time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Gosh. How is that not a gold record? It's not out yet. If you're looking for this oh. <laughs> song, Come That's Alone, Good uh, answer. it'll be on the new Sun Eaters album that comes out, I believe. This holiday season, but as Chris Garibaldi of the uh, Sun Eaters has told our listeners mm-hmm. uh, over on the Patreon, I believe they'll release it there as soon as it becomes available. <laughs> Love that and jam. Then we'll figure out a way to get out to the, le- the awesome. rest of our listeners too. We'll figure something out. Anyway, hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club. It's that fun paranormal UFO Bigfoot themed podcast you've gotten into this summer. Hell yeah! Uh, we like to tell uh, stories of high strangeness and share histories of people's personal paranormal uh, experiences with celebrity guests. And today we have, well, she informed us that we have to describe her as a superhero. Yes. As a fashion model. Yep. As. <laughs> A sexy lady. Yeah. That's not me. She said it. Sexiest woman alive. Yes. That's all I um, said for you to say. That's the only thing. we have... <laughs> You're just coming up with all this stuff. Right here. Musical <laughs> artist. Grace Mitchell is with us today. Woo! Grace, welcome to the show. I'm so excited. Uh, we're so excited yeah, to have you, Grace. this is a special episode. Grace is part of the BCC family from the get-go. It's true. Nova's mama. Yeah. And you work with uh, Andy Rosen, who we've had on the show. Yeah, he's a producer. So uh, he's my boy. Yeah. So uh, it's good. It's good. Good to, when we get some musicians in on the show because we don't. We haven't gotten enough. So this is awesome. Um, Grace, welcome to the clubhouse. Oh my god, I'm so excited right now because this has been happening at my house <laughs> for months. Yeah. Do you just want to, uh, should we pull back the curtain and describe what your relationship is to the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riley's okay. my boyfriend. Producer Riley is my yeah. boyfriend. Awesome. That's yeah. Right. Riley, don't embarrass her. <laughs> I'm gonna. Ow. I'm gonna embarrass her for no, sure. No. <laughs> She'll embarrass me. No, someone's no, no. gonna be embarrassed by the end of this. Oh, oh that yes. always happens. Uh, usually someone's ashamed and it's me. <laughs> <laughs> usually someone's crying yeah. and it's Brad. <laughs> yeah. true. Oh man. Uh well thanks for sticking around and come back to the show if you listen to last week's Chupacabra episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. That was a great one, actually. That I, might be one I of my favorite it. episodes of all mm. time. I have had so much fun. He's and we legend. are also joined by Nova, the BCC Paw Patrol. Mm. What's up, baby? He looks like a white yeti. He's so cute. Um, so Grace, let's get into this a little bit because uh, uh, other than being a musician and an artist and a, a superhero, um, we have been hinted mm-hmm. at through you about some highly strange activity that has happened in your life. So I would like to just get into it. Yeah, if dude. We may. Let's, Let's do it. jump and right ask in. Ask Grace, Let's do it. what is your personal paranormal history? Okay. Well, to begin, I feel like. I it hasn't been so much hinting as being like, hey guys, I have probably one of the best <laughs> UFO, like just being the most boastful about my UFO story. Yeah, and I really hope that I won't let you and the we listeners finally down. picked up on the clues. Yeah, and I believe got a good story for us. I got a good one. I, I believe you're our one. only guest to have a UFO story. What? Yeah, yeah. so far no. I'm not Holy even kidding. <gasps> we don't think we've had any close encounters with guests. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm honored. Oh gee. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. Um, I've told this story to Riley before to in the beginning of when we were dating, to which I don't know. Did you think I was crazy? No, that sealed the deal. Oh, yeah. yeah that yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah, that, that was hot like, for him. Right, Super turn on. <laughs> <laughs> like, Let's do this. Freaky chick, seen an alien. That's yeah. cool. Um, yeah. So shall I jump that's in? That's a good, I just want to say that's a good, I, that's like a good icebreaker. Yeah. And also a good way to figure out if you're compatible with somebody. Oh, mm-hmm. certainly. Like if, if they're they like, can't be down, if they're like a normie about it and they're not cool with it, then it's over oh, instantly. Yeah. Guys, by the way, if you didn't already figure this out, no normies on this show. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> if you're a normie, a normie. turn this yuck. podcast off. <laughs> Ew and yuck. Be freaky. Cause freaky is fun. Hell yeah. Weirdos. Freakies. Cheers. 
That's true. Yeah, clowns. Wow, Actually, maybe not clown. clowns. I got that all the time. You're weird. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> thank you yeah, totally. Thank you very much. It's an it's it's a you wear it as a as a medal of honor being it a is. weird kid in your school. I was a weird kid. Yep. I'm sure that y'all were pretty weird. Yeah, as no doubt about it. As long as you are I not like it. pouring your chocolate milk on your pizza and then eating it to gross okay. everyone out, that's a weird mm, I will that, never get on board with. No. That's a weird that becomes a serial killer that's that's, <laughs> that's different we avoid stuff. that that's different stuff okay okay cool uh all right i'm gonna do it. i like yes. rehearsed it and everything okay this is gonna be better go. told than the one i have coming up in, during the second half of the show <laughs> um okay once upon a time i lived in a small town called cottage grove and cottage grove is in um oregon it wow. is about 30 minutes outside of Eugene, Oregon. It's a very small town, um, surrounded by forestation. It's a lumbering town where they produced lumber. It became a place when the gold rush happened, and it's called um, – they have every they have a festival every year called Bohemian Mining Days that celebrates, like, all of the, the gold – what are those called? Pro- proctors? Prospectors. Prospectors. Mm. All the gold prospectors that came through there and, like – basically made cottage grove a thing it already has like a great name like the cottage grove incident totally. right yeah it's, it's totally set up for that it's ex- yeah so i'm gonna paint a little picture because it is just such a place where it reminds me of when we did boggy creek the, mm. the movie night for all the patreon listeners did you was there any uh history of strange activity in the town growing up that you heard of because i hear like lumber yard pacific northwest yeah. i think bigfoot i mean was there any, oh, sure. was there any of that in the culture did you, you know? i don't have a particular incident or like story that i could i could recollect but i'm sure that this is a place where some high strangers went down and like bigfoot definitely was there's talks of bigfoot growing up i'm sure that lots of people have been witnesses but um so i yeah so i grew up there um in a in a little farm farmhouse in town and on all sides of the community is just forest land and i will i I walked like a mile and a half to school every day from the time that i was in like elementary school middle school and it was really small town everybody knew each other it was great to grow up i had a great childhood um and one night my mother had found out from the news that there was going to be a meteor shower and she was like oh by the way i'm I'm like 11 okay. in this story so i'm in elementary school i'm like in fifth grade and she's like let's go do that let's go to your school where there's a big field of like open clearing near my elementary school and let's go watch it because you could see the sky. It was a clear night. Love that. And I was like, Mom, you're cool as heck. I love you. And so we went at like midnight past my bedtime. And we took my dog, just me and my mom and my dog. And we rode our bicycles there. And it was beautiful. It was like around this time in the summertime. It was like June. School's out. Clear, warm night. We go down there. And we had packed snacks and we were going to lay our blanket out. And we went and we in the middle of the field. No one was out there. And we laid our blanket down, eating some couscous salad. Meteors start happening. It's gorgeous. We're seeing all these lights come down. We're like having the best time talking about the universe and getting real trippy with it. My mom's really cool. So she was just like like totally indulging my like my my child brain of wonder and being up late. It was great. And then... We're watching it for maybe like an hour, and um, we are starting to wind down. We're thinking we're probably going to go home at this point. We stay for a couple minutes, and then I see uh, a star up in the sky that's pretty bright. And you know like when you look up in the night sky and you see a star and you think it might be a plane Mm -hmm. because it's moving around a little bit. So I'm watching it, and it seems like it's probably a plane, And but it's having this kind of very like sporadic movement where Mm. it's, it's not doesn't it doesn't seem quite like a plane so i'm keeping my eye on this thing but i'm also kind of watching the night sky and then it's moving it's kind of picking up speed it's far away far 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 away it looks like it's a star but it's moving and it's picking up speed and it's heading in the east above my school and i like nudged my mom i'm like mom look at this like what do you think that is and she's like it's a plane and i was like do you think it's like some something more than a plane and she's like she's like oh yeah yeah it's you know ufo and then i'm like haha yeah and we're kind of joking about it and then it moves over the school and it's and it 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 
appears to be almost like almost like hovering above the school but again it's really far off so it, okay it's, we're like it's it's maybe like a helicopter or a plane or something. Now, how far are you from the school itself? The school is probably like a hundred meters away okay. from us. So we're in yeah, this you're big on the football field. field. So this yeah. thing, is, right? So this thing is positioned yeah. from your point of view over the school. It's like hori- but, horizon, but it's, it's but it's not literally over the, no, the no, roof no, no, of the school. No. Okay, so yeah. so if it were like right. for example a plane, it would be moving in the direction right. of the east above my school. Okay. And we're watching it, and then. All of a sudden, another light appears cool. in the sky, not far from the original light, and it kind of looks like to be the same, same, same vibe. It's like twinkling, almost like a star. We're assuming it's a plane, mm. and then we're watching it. I'm like, this is getting kind of weird because they're not moving as though like a plane would, mm-hmm. and because they're kind of moving around really quickly. And um, yeah, and while planes go from A to B, yeah, I mean, yeah, they don't, they're not like moving or like stopping or anything. And they have like, like that. flashing red yeah, lights, yeah, yeah, yeah. like FDA lights. Totally, like you can. Kinda... So it, we're like, so at first we go from thinking it's a star to now it's a plane, but now it's not moving like a plane. So we're really confused, and we're watching these two objects. And I say to my mom, I'm like, this is really weird. Did they look like they're communicating with one another? Whoa! And she's like, yeah, because one is one is doing like a little blinking light and then the other one will go and blink a little bit and then the other one and they're going back and forth kind of in this like binary way and we're like at this point we're like whoa what is going on here this is really bizarre and we're watching this for probably a minute and then one of the two objects explodes what What? yeah the entire night sky lights up and it is like the brightest thing you've ever seen so bright no sound but like huge explosive light and we're like oh oh my god and we're watching it and then the original object is like a consistent light at this point so like we're like we have no idea what's going on how long did the light flash it was just a flash a flash okay. of light a, a like equivalent longer of like a than firework. a camera flash like a firework okay or something but not not like a consistent firework right. it was just like that bright and like a camera flash yeah that's a good that's a good About example that long. okay so we're watching it we're like if it slipped into another dimension well okay weird mm-hmm. okay maybe oh, what happened, baby? oh no no probably got his foot touched he's okay um so anyway we yeah so so we're looking at this thing we're like oh my god and then the other thing and the, the original object that we were staring at starts to become more visible. Its shape starts to kind of fill out a little bit more. It's moving in the direction of where we are. So it's come now from the west to the east and is now coming back towards us, towards the west. How are you feeling at this point? We I mean... are scared. Yeah. We are so scared. And we're like just in complete amazement, totally like awestruck excitement kind of turns kind of getting excited we were excited at first because we were joking around we're the only people there we're like my mom is into trippy shit i'm into trippy shit and am i allowed to curse on this yeah Yeah. oh yeah oh Oh, word yeah fuck yeah so um yeah so we're watching this thing and it's coming in our direction we're watching its form fill out a little bit more and then we our, our depth perception is telling us that it's starting to move towards us and move closer to the ground and I'm seeing this thing and we're watching it and we're watching it and it's starting to come in towards us. And it, it's, it was like, I, I mean, it's so surreal even just like thinking about it and recounting it. And we're watching it and I, finally we can see that it's this giant object and it's moving really close to the ground. And it's coming in, it's coming in, it's coming in. And underneath of it, there are these lights on the bottom of what is this giant craft that now is hovering over us about 200 feet off the ground. Okay. 200 feet off the it ground. It was, yes. Okay. Like 200 feet off the ground. So if you were to hold up your hand to it, this yeah. is a test. Could you cover it with your thumb? Yeah, definitely. Could you block the whole thing out with your thumb? Oh, no. No, no. I thought you meant like a light. Right. No, no, no. Okay. No. What about your hand? No. No. So it would take like it's, yeah, it it's, was like a, it was like a baseball diamond. But you said craft, so wow. now it went from like what looked like a star yeah, to now to a, what definitely looks it like look, definitely looks a like craft. a craft. And the the the, it, the other thing about what I was saying earlier about the movement of the craft, why it was so bizarre, is because 
it took from the time frame of it like exploding or the other thing like exploding and us seeing that huge flash and this thing coming in and it coming close to the ground and like coming towards us a very short amount of time wow it was so quick to the point where we're thinking it's a plane far off in the distance and now it's like directly above that's like, us that's got to like throw your reality off oh it was insane. so wacky yeah it was really bizarre really scary my mom reaches over grabs my hand she's like like white knuckling my hand mm-hmm. i we're like motionless my dog is looking up at it we're all like i could feel my heart rate we were like I thought to myself in my head, I was like, uh, this is about to happen. Yeah. We're about to like straight up get abducted. You, like, had this that, is a thing. you had that thought go through yeah, your yeah. head. Oh, Can hell you yeah. describe what the bot what what the surface of the bottom of the craft yeah, looks so, like? So the bottom of the craft was this very like dark material, industrial almost. You could definitely see like outlines of 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 like different shapes on the bottom of it. There were lights, six lights on the bottom, all yellow. Wow. And um it was and triangular diamond, tri- in shape. Okay. Oh, it's triangular. Yeah. Okay triangular in shape but 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 it it was like uh it looked like that mirror almost behind us there's this big triangle yeah mirror and totally it, like it, it wasn't like uh it wasn't like a, a plane or anything like it's that a black triangle it was a black triangle and very like very like industrial on the bottom of it it was one of the light did they have a light at the center of it do you remember no, that was no. like dome so you have six lights six one lights three. going like this okay so go one at each end and then probably another one in the middle of each yeah, so, yeah. So just outlining the triangle all the way around totally okay. so this thing so i want to get back to like it's just yeah. so it's 200 feet off the ground oh, yeah. and it's, it's like just hovering, hovering above there? us yeah it's hovering above us was there any and sound no sound completely silent it's completely silent that was what was crazy is that it's completely silent and there's no one around us mm-hmm. at all. And we're like in the middle of nowhere, essentially. Wow. And it it's like so silent and it moved in so quickly. And it's hovering above us. Did you have the sense that it was aware of your presence? Yeah, certainly. Totally. Because we were the only ones there. And why would it, why would it you know, choose to come directly above us? So close us? to you guys. Yeah. Right? And, um, yeah, so we're watching this thing. I'm thinking in my head, like, holy cow, this is like, we're, it's about to go down. Mm. My mom is probably thinking the same thing. I mean, when I talk to her today about it, she, by the way, like our stories are identical. Like this is a most definitely like uh, instance that happened. And when she talks about it, she's like, yeah, I thought I was going to get abducted. I bet. Who's so, to say you didn't? I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, who knows, man? Seriously. So what happened uh. next? So we're so yeah, so we're we're watching this thing, and it was probably only hovering above us for about three seconds, but it felt like infinity when this mm-hmm. giant craft is above you, and so it's it's hovering above us. We're like every everyone's quiet. We're looking at it. We're we're preparing ourselves to essentially get abducted, and then it blasts off into like warp speed. It goes wow. off into the west, and you can no longer see it. It goes by, like, faster than a millisecond. So it moves horizontally. Yeah, out, straight out into can the Can I ask? Uh, wow, um, I don't couldn't see it. Want to date you? But what year? Can I ask what year about this was? Like, so I was eleven. So this was what I'm twenty now. This was like. <laughs> The math on that twelve years ago. I don't know. Nine. 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 Yes. Nine. Jesus Christ. So this Nine. is this is two thousand nine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. God. I just want to know to cross. I'm all nervy. Reference. I'm all nervy right now. No, you can't no. throw math don't, at me when I'm nervy. Me. I can't do. <laughs> I'm wow. like talking about my scary story. That is an yeah. incredible story. Yeah. I mean, the, de- the details right? on that mm-hmm. are just like so strange. And yet, not strange in yeah. the world of ufology. That's yeah. So like- okay. So the story keeps happening. So basically, we we we're, we're like, oh my god. Okay. So this thing blasts off. We know we no longer see it. Turn to one another. We're like, that really just went down. No real words were exchanged. Just like, uh, uh, uh. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. And we pack up all of our things, put them into our bike, head back home. Um, my dad's there. We tell him the story. He's freaked out. We call the UFO hotline. Which is like super Smart. clogged up because I think that that's a thing. Like on meteor shower nights, there's a lot of paranormal activity. Wow. So it's all clogged up. We can't really get through to anybody. And then my mom and I are like, should we share this story? And we're like, yeah. I mean, I was pr- about probably to no ask, one's going like, to believe yeah, us, but may as well. It, but I'm so glad you did that. Yeah. What's the name of the town again? Cottage Grove, Cottage Oregon. Grove. And so then later, I went on to learn about the fact that like the craft that I saw 
is something that a lot of people tend to see. It's the same one as like the Phoenix. It's, it's the same lights. as Phoenix lights, that black um, triangle craft. Yeah, it's the same same exact looking one. Yeah, they've been reported all over the world. Yeah, yeah black triangular craft, with which the I had along no the edge. prior idea. Of about. course, why would you know at that no. age yeah. about the Phoenix lights? You know, my my like. I, I always assumed like what a UFO would look like is that like saucer disc. And mm-hmm. so when this happened, we were like, I mean, I, I remember thinking also like, is this a military craft? Like, right. You know, what was that bike ride home? Like after that? So fast. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so fast. Full speed, full speed ahead. Fifth wow. gear. Wow. Yeah. Did you, any, did you happen to check the time when this, I was thinking was like 1am by the time this happened, we were probably at the park for like an hour. So no, no, no sense of, time. um, oh no 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 but i wonder i mean i by the way like just from like listening to the podcast and hearing you guys talk about alternate dimensions this is the first time that i it ever occurred to me that maybe like cryptids and ufo sightings or alien interaction could be um multi-dimensional and mm. i've always i like appreciated that idea because it's like yeah how do you explain this this stuff I don't know. Yeah, I like portals. and those are and those are portals. just yeah, portals. I, I explain portals. everything away at portals. portals. You know, and those are just those are just theories. Like, I mean, no one even knows. Like, I I was listening to um, Richard Dolan, who's one of the more scientific, incredible guys investigating UFOs for the last thirty years, and he did a he did a whole thing on the extraterrestrial hypothesis, and 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 just you know, I've always, I'm. I'm more of an interdimensional guy, but God, does he bring credence to that as well? You're just mm-hmm. like, there's God knows where these things are coming from, whether mm-hmm. it's f- from here or from there. I mean, I don't think anybody really has any real idea. I mean, th- that that is just fascinating. That is wild because that is so crystal. I, I want to go back to like, you, you saw one of them kind of like, you said you said the word explode. Yeah, that's the, and, and, and the word explode is actually also taken from my 11 year old self. Like that is right. the thought that I had in my head. I yeah. thought explosion. I didn't think like portal or anything it else. Could, that and, could have been some kind of Stargate. Yeah. I think like poof, mass amount of energy blinking. Well, that's kind of what I figured. Another, uh, mm-hmm. warp, yeah. Like a warp or a wormhole. And when I say communicating too, that's the, also my eleven-year-old brain. That's these are the two exact words that I use to mm-hmm. describe it that I've been using to describe but you, it. But but for that nine makes years. sense. I mean, yeah, because advanced technology. I mean, on one hand, would baffle us, but you would think that it would also be able to understand what it was. I don't know, doing a child to understand. I don't know. There's just something like you could tell they were communicating, signaling to each other. One either. You didn't see anything. You didn't see the the black triangle like fire anything no, at no. the other one. No, it was it was no, it was like it was like they were they were blinking on and off back and forth in 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 this rhythmic way, and then one of them lit up the night sky. So funny when you were telling that part of the story, I was thinking about how we really do take for granted, even when we're like sitting here talking about these stories or researching UFO stuff, like. I just realized listening to that, like we really take for granted how little we look um, up. Well, that, but um, how little like command of flight we really have at this stage in our evolution. You know, like oh yeah, rocket propulsion. Fl- well, no, it, but it, well, I mean, we take it for granted, like like um. We've only been flying for what a hundred years, a little over a hundred years. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. and obviously we've been able to. To, to achieve so much just in that as a technological marvel. But if you were to take a uh, a car, even, just your basic... Look, I drive a Prius. If you were to take a, Pri- a Prius back in time, say 500 years, 400 oh, yeah, years, yeah. and say this basically operates the same way as a horse does, but a million times fucking better, and look at what this does, and this and that, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it would blow... The thought that's put into the Prius, a GPS system, uh, a hybrid engine, all that stuff that would mean nothing to the people back yeah. then, where even just a simple idea of like fuel goes in there. You know, there's that. Totally. Now, I think, I think they could be able to sit in the cockpit or, you know, and, and go, oh, I get it. Like it's user friendly in that way, much like how you watched these two things and you went, oh, they're communicating. But so just think about that. Like imagine what 
aircraft 500 years from now will be like and mm-hmm. what they'll be able to do. Mm-hmm. Now imagine what f- aircraft 500 million years from now would be able to do. And so for these guys to be able to move that quickly, blink in and out of contact, mm-hmm. like it must be just so yesterday's news to them. And we're sitting here on this planet going, oh my God, look at what the- how fast that's moving. And they've been doing it for thousands, if not millions of years. Yeah. Yeah. And and so what beyond just flight or interstellar travel have they been able to accomplish? Yeah. A- any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, Arthur C. Clarke. And I, I always think like of that, that you know? Mm-hmm. Crazy. So That's w- the thing, too, is like the, when, with this explosion thing, quote unquote, that I said, it like i could what what they're doing maybe my brain doesn't even comprehend what they're doing technologically right. that the only closest word that i could use to describe what happened is a light explosion they right. could be going into warp Man, speed they could be jumping so dimensions i also wondered if a meteor hit it and blew it up or oh, something oh god yeah i don't even know who That's knows a good who knows so when this thing was how big was it when it was like 200 feet hovering would you say like the size of like a like a baseball diamond it was wow. huge wow. it was huge it was That's insane. so so big and it was really the the bottom side of it was like really vivid in the way that it was um I could see all like the kind of mechanical, I don't know, the yeah, parts of it on wild. the bottom. Yeah, that's just yeah. wild. Like I could see it, no, but it was a flat. You said the word craft and uh, metallic and industrial. Yeah. Those are like what people describe when they see UFOs up close, you know? Yeah. If you had to guess, I know you said, I'm not sure if it's this or that, like if 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 pressed or like, where do you, what does your gut tell you it was and where it came from? UFO, for sure. million percent. Not military no ufo okay. ufo because it, because the way that again like the, besides the fact that it looked like something that i don't know could have potentially been i don't know like military or some secret mm-hmm. operation type of craft the way that it moved was remarkable and unlike anything on earth the fact that it could move from point a to point b in under a second i love that detail of and that it was so far away and then became so close it doesn't make it, any sense and, and your brain because we're not used to seeing stuff move that quick mm-hmm. so you really have to go like that's a reality altering experience no, just you, just you, the movement of the craft alone you know when you know when is you're reality seeing something altering out of this world let me ask you: Has it changed? How has it altered your your perception of the world, or has it? Yeah. So, so one of the biggest impacts that that had on me was that now I just like I, when people tell me that they see remarkable things, mm-hmm. I am not gonna immediately jump to you're crazy. Yeah. And I think that's that's something that, you know, is it's it's like a it's a that's way an for epidemic. Our, it's 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 frustrating because it's a really sobering way to just like put a band-aid on someone when yeah. the fact is like we've all seen crazy stuff and a lot of it even if it is like i don't know like people are fabricating it or they're not telling the truth what they experienced is like so real to them and like who am i to judge that mm-hmm. so that's the way that it impacted me is i'm not going to like t- take for granted when someone's telling me a story and i don't think it's real i'm not i'm just gonna be like okay they experienced something wild and yeah. i should not discredit that or devalue that well and how lucky to have your mother sitting there right by you to, yeah to and i have the three, exact same event you exactly know? i have my mom who witnessed it my dog who witnessed it and then mm-hmm. my, my my dad who was able to c- confirm by uh um vicariously through us that it happened because he was also freaked out right yeah. I'm dying to know. About, I wouldn't be surprised if there were other witnesses in and around the community that might yeah. have seen something that night as well. You know? I been. know. I was just looking right now. Mm. I was like Googling yeah. on like UFO hunters and MUFON, seeing if I could find any any list. Yeah, yeah we'll have to do a little. I need to do it when I can actually that. focus on it and not, you know. I, I would be so fascinated to do yeah. some research on like Cottage Grove in particular and all the paranormal activity. It might be there. worth a Gra- phone call Grace, to MUFON. Grace's and Cottage just, Grove incident. That yeah. is so what cool. What an awesome story. It's a, you know, it, I was nervous, y'all. I was shaking while I was talking. No way. I, I want to get it right for the for the yeah. Listeners. No, it's great. No, and, that's and, an amazing and what you story. talk about, like not immediately dismissing witnesses in this thing. Yeah. that's that's what this show's all about. I mean, that's because that's what I've having seen. Not that, but similar Something. things that I can't explain. Yeah. You know, some stuff I think is bullshit, but I I don't think that's bullshit. I believe this a hundred percent. 
Um, I've also experienced that thing. I've never seen a crowd. I've seen orbs, but you you get that sense that they are totally aware that you are locked onto it. Like that you're sure. watching it. It's watching you. And there's like a there's like a recognition there, and it's like it uh, creepy is one of the words, but it's like uh, yeah. It's just I gotta wild. say too, actually, I di- I left out this part, but I I wanted to say that when it was hovering above us, when my mom and I simultaneously shared this moment where we were like, okay, this could happen, we could get abducted. Mm-hmm. There was this crazy feeling of like. That I feel like people who who must like get in like a like an airplane crash or something like emergency landing where they're like holy shit I'm about to like witness my own death yeah. that's almost almost liberating where I was like mm-hmm. okay I don't know what's about to happen and I can't control it so I'm just gonna go with it wow and it was like kind of like this freeing even at, at like eleven I was like this freeing like liberating thing where I was like that's okay crazy. about to jump into the infinite abyss let's see what happens y'all yeah wow so. That is wild. Well, well it may thank not you be for the telling. last time you see one of those. Yeah, I hope not. But I feel like it is. Do you think it was the first time it was? Do you think it was the first yeah, time? Yeah, that was the first time I definitely saw one, and I think it's probably going to be the last time too because people don't like have multiple. Yeah, they do. I mean, yeah, surprised they, they do. Yeah, but those are called schizophrenic people. Well, so. we'll find out. <laughs> I'm going to credit myself by saying, yeah, you just yeah. talk about how <laughs> woke right. and open. Okay, like, well, those people are crazy. Before we cut to break, we have a little game to play with you. Oh my gosh, yes. Bullshit or believe it. Okay. You know how this is played? I just found out. Okay, yeah. great. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. And, and I topics. won't be offended. <laughs> you list topics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say bullshit or believe it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. you can use, if you're not sure if you're on the fence, then use your vocal expressions. Just err on the side of believe. And just make sounds? <laughs> well, I'm saying you <laughs> can like, be like, bullshit. Bullshit? Yeah. Or oh, okay. believe it? I thought I, I think you know, like, We can always go it. back and visit. If there's anything on here that you want to be like, <laughs> add an amendment to, we can come back after. Okay. All right. Ready? Yes. Set. Ghost. Ooh. Oh man, I haven't. That's that's a believe it because I just had something crazy happen. Oh boy. Okay. okay. We'll circle back. UFOs. UFOs. Yes. Bigfoot. Believe it. Um, believe it ish. Angels. Don't believe it. Bullshit. I said bullshit. bullshit. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Bullshit. Gnomes. Bullshit. Come on. JFK assassination conspiracy. Uh, believe it. Fairies. Bullshit. Unicorns. Bullshit. Loch Ness monster. Believe it. Alien Greys. Believe it. Parallel universes. Believe it. Uh, Reptilians disguising themselves as humans. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Look at me. This is your game. It's bullshit. Riley's learning a lot. Riley and I, we talk about this stuff all the time. Bullshit. Heaven. Oh. Huh. Bullshit, but because I believe that there, that I don't think anything happens after death. That's great. That's the definition of bullshit. Hell. <laughs> uh, bullshit. Dragons. Bullshit. Yeti. Mm, bullshit. Elves. Bullshit. ESP. Oh, believe it, I think. Chupacabra. Bullshit. Demons. Oh, I think probably bullshit. Atlantis. Ooh, believe it. Life on other planets. Believe it. World peace. Mm. Probably bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and it ends on a yeah, down note. Yeah. So you just had a ghost experience? I just had something really crazy happen. Actually, that did not happen to me personally, but happened to me via somebody showing me a photo of something that is the craziest shit I've ever seen in what my What was it? Life. Can you send it to me? We'll put it up yeah, in this episode. Yeah, it would be hard for me to d- dig and find the person that okay. I... Basically, okay, I'll give you a really, really short yeah. story. So basically, I went on tour with this band called Moon. I was opening up for them. We did like four shows. And they're... A uh, photographer slash I think like content person on their tour was this girl who did her uh, thesis. Uh, what is that called? End of the year project in college. What is that called? I didn't go to college. Thesis. This is a word. Yeah, thesis. Yeah. Her thesis on her major, and it was about ghosts. Her thesis was about ghosts because she says that she's been seeing ghosts and talking to ghosts since she was a little kid. And she um, has this aunt who, who lived in Jamaica. Please be Jamaica. I hope it's Jamaica. And she said she okay. So her aunt was getting rid of her uncle's home because her uncle had passed away. So her aunt went over there with a couple of friends to go and like check out the house and like say goodbye to it because they were going to put it on the market. And um, 
they were in the kitchen and the aunt was like, take a photo of me in this kitchen. <laughs> That's creepy already. And <laughs> this is this is her aunt and like two other women who are all about like 70 years old and they've got iPhones. So they have no idea how to use them. <laughs> and they are taking photos in the kitchen and they do the uh, the photo burst mm-hmm. and in on accident. And in this photo burst, they capture like guys the craziest image i've ever seen in my life of a full person person in the shot that there was not a person Whoa. like an apparition type person like, or like a fully formed physical a person a fully formed it was the profile of a fully formed person bending over the stove in the background of what is a burst of about 20 photos wow. and it's only, only captured in one, in one of Whoa. them That's and it weird. is the craziest shit i've ever seen in my life all right if you can track it I down i got to i got to get it for we you have guys t- we it's have crazy. time before this goes up yeah Send it to this guy. I, want, I feel so bad. I wanted to fact check literally everything I said. That's okay. But that, Shh, the we photos. We never do that. Oh, yeah, we're not. <laughs> <doing> <laughs> yeah. Once we comes out of our mouths, that's, yeah. that's good I enough for us. Track her you down. you did the refer to the FAA thing. as the FDA earlier in this. Uh, I did. You did. But I well, cool. d- a lot of dentists. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what nine years ago was because a I lot can't of do dentists do subtraction. Keep track of they see shit. I meant FAA. Sorry, I say that shit all the time. I say yeah, Skywalker and says Skinwalker. So anyway, well, before that, I didn't it. believe in ghosts, but now I think I maybe do believe in ghosts. That's the point. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're wow. gonna take a quick break. When we come back, it's time for high strangeness. Ooh. Cool. The UFOs will continue. Dang. And we're back. And it's time for high strangeness. And we have a tale to keep the UFOs in the skies wow. tonight. Um, so this is one that we mentioned. I'm trying to remember what episode it was. I think it was during the Orange Grove encounter. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is five or six episodes, ten episodes ago maybe at this point. I can't remember. Uh, the one with the guy who hit up in the tree and there were robots oh, yeah. and aliens trying to get him in the tree. Cisco Grove. Yo. Cisco Grove. Thank what? you. Um, so... Uh, in yeah, you're lucky shit didn't come out of the UFO. Yeah, no yeah. shit. That would have been a whole other story. Play with you, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> in that story, we brought up this incident that uh, J. Allen Hynek had considered one of the most compelling uh, close encounter stories of that era. And this is the story of the Pascagoula Close Encounter. Mm-hmm. Uh, this took place on October 11th, 1973 in Pascagoula, Mississippi. And it involves two witnesses, two men, Charles Hickson, who was 42 years old at the time, and Calvin Parker Jr., not to be confused with Ray Parker Jr., Okay, you know, who wrote the Ghostbusters theme song? Yeah, I got the -the glow-in-the-dark vinyl. (laughs) Oh, you have that? I've heard of that. Oh, yeah, you've seen it. We brought it in. Oh, yeah, that's why I've heard of that. (laughs) Anyway, uh, (laughs) Calvin Parker Jr. was 18 or 19 at the time. I've got conflicting ages on that. So... These two gentlemen uh, worked at the shipyards in Pascagoula, and after work on a Thursday evening, they decided to go home, get their fishing gear, and go out to the river, which I think wasn't too far from where they worked, to do some fishing. And they were catching uh, fishing for catfish. And um, so Mississippi, it was. I know it's like uh, so they're they're out there for a few hours. It's October, so it's dark. You know, it's getting dark out. And around 9 p.m., they decided to move from the spot they were at over to a um, another spot by uh, an abandoned uh, an old pier. And they're on foot. They're 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 uh, fishing at the banks. They're not in a boat. So they go over to the pier, and they're fishing there. Um, and uh, Charles Hickson says that he noticed a weird buzzing sound almost a zipping sound in the sky and he looks over and he sees this uh craft that's about um in roughly in the shape of a uf or in the ufo it's roughly in the shape of a ufo (laughs) in of a football and it's about uh eight feet tall and about 18 feet Mm -hmm. long and he said there were two blue, almost headlights on it that were beaming towards mm. their way. Wow. And he looks over and he sees that uh, Calvin is staring at this thing too. So he goes, okay, we both see it. So this is sort of similar to you and your mom, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And um, 
the the craft comes over and it descends in front of them no. and they watch as a doorway seems to unfold appear in the craft and out of the craft towards them on shore come three beings and these entities are are unlike any other entity that we've discussed on the show. These would fall more into that high strange category of the Flatwoods monster or the uh, Verona's UFO landing that took place in, allegedly in Russia in 1989. These aren't your typical alien greys. More like a 60s sci-fi almost, robotic. Yeah, almost. But yeah. so Get a listen to this. Right. So they were described as being f- about five to five and a half feet tall. They had wrinkled gray. They were all one color, all wrinkly gray skin, like the texture of an elephant or mm. like a tree trunk, right? Mm. All these like wrinkles and divots. Where their nose would be was a long, almost mm. carrot shaped appendage. And then on the sides, there's snowmen. Yeah. And then on the (laughs) sides, they had towards their shoulders, and there was no neck. The head and the shoulders kind of fused together. There were two other little carrot shaped things where the ears should be. And uh, Charles Hickson said there was a little slit for a mouth below that. No eyes that he could tell. The, The forehead area and the face was so wrinkled, he couldn't see any eyes. Their bodies, again, continued with that leathery gray. He said it was either skin or some type of covering. But um, their arms were a little bit longer, and they had crab-like hands, lobster claw-like hands. (laughs) And then their legs, he said their legs looked like they were fused together and then had feet that were rounded off stump-like, like like an elephant's, he said. And they floated. They gl- they glided over Ugh. to them, and they could see the craft floating above the above the ground as well. So they are freaked out, and um, they come to, up to Calvin, two of them on each side of him, and he says he feels a, he felt a, an instant but very quickly subsiding pain in his shoulder, and then he started to float. His legs came out from underneath him, and he started to levitate at an angle, almost like you're in a recliner. And he looked over to see what was happening to Calvin Parker Jr. And This is Charles, sorry. Charles looked over to see what was happening to Calvin Parker Jr., and he said he just passed out. He faint, And later, Calvin said he fainted from fear. So they take both of these guys inside. the. They float them into the craft. No. And inside the craft, um, Charles described the, a circular room that was very bright, but he could find no discernible light source. And that the beings put him in front of an object that came out of the wall that he just said looked like a giant eye, um, like almost mechanical eye, and it looked him up and down and gave him an examination. And he said the thing about these beings was he got the strong sense. He couldn't move. He was paralyzed. He could move his eyes, he said, but everything else he couldn't move. He had a really strong sensation that these beings were synthetic. I don't think he used that term. He said robotic because they had a mechanical-like movement to them. And he said the thing that he noticed was that their chests didn't rise and fall as if they were breathing air. So he didn't think that they were like living creatures. He thought that they were being controlled by some phantom puppet ma- master. Some some guy was oh, wow. controlling. You Maybe know, the eye Somebody thing. else. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, wow. Okay. Some I have other... Sauron. Right. So um, he also remembers about it that... Um, uh, so, so Charles Hickson, he was a uh, Korean War vet. And um, he had been in battle. He'd seen combat. And he remembers sort of a moment where he was thinking, okay, if these guys are going to kill me, just kill me right now. But he heard his old commanding officer's voice in his head back back, that he, back when he was in the Korean War saying, like, listen, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he was like, listen, when we, if, you, if we're ever in the shit, you keep a clear head, you look for a way out, and you stay alive. And mm-hmm. so he was like, he kind of fell back on his military training to help him cope with this extreme... Mm-hmm. Um, Stress. Yeah. Yeah. 
So Ray he, Parker, not so fortunate to have that dream. Calvin Parker, yeah, or Calvin, Ray Parker. Or Ray. No, Calvin Parker Jr. did not. And, and, and what happened in his life took a very different turn after Charles Hickson's. So the, Charles uh, thinks that the uh, encounter took about 20 minutes, and they were placed back out um, on shore, and the craft left him. And he got a hold of Calvin, and they were both returned right where they were taken. And Calvin, he said, he knew from being in the war he was heading into shock. Mm -hmm. He was acting that way. He was, like, totally dazed, freaked out, and in shock. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. they go back to Charles's truck. Charles said he sat there and did a few shots of whiskey to steady his nerves, and they talked about what what they were going to do next. And they ultimately decided, well, we have to tell somebody in case— it happens to somebody else, or uh, it's an invasion. Like they didn't know what the fuck was going on, and but they were both pretty clearly, quickly come to the conclusion, much like you did with your mom, that whatever they had just encountered was not of this earth. So that's pretty obvious. They yeah. drive yeah. and get. They find a payphone. They get on the payphone. They call Keesler Air Force Base, and Keesler at the time. Now this is just a few years after Project Blue. Project Blue book ended and it was funny because the air force literally told them we don't we're not in the business of ufos anymore call your (laughs) call your sheriff yeah wow so they call the sheriff and the sheriff kind of laughs at them but says come on in and tell me what you saw and when they get to the sheriff station the sheriff um admitted that they seemed like they had just come from an extremely uh, extremely stressful incident and so it's authentic And they questioned the guys that got the story. They thought it was over the top and a little silly. They like they were laughing kind of behind their backs, Uh, which, of course, is what Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker Jr. are the most afraid of happening is being mocked and being made fun of after this horrible fucking thing happens to you that you cannot explain. But what they did was they left them alone in the interrogation room and they recorded a secret tape of the two of them, oh. expecting them to be like, well, we got to pull the fast one over on them. And what they heard instead were the two guys unpacking what they had just seen mm. and experienced. Mm. And they were sitting there going, God, God to hell, I never thought I would, I would never thought I would have seen anything like this. Did you see that door come up? Yeah. I don't know how that door opened. I didn't. And did you see that? And I was, yeah. And 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 mm. did they Just verifying? I I passed out. I was so scared. Just that verifying with one another. And they were like, he. They were like, God, I got to get home to my wife. I got to tell my wife about this. I got blah 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 blah. Like I get chills thinking about it. And there's actually you can find transcripts of the recording that you know I didn't bring in today to read. But oh, they're come on. They just sit back and they talk about it and talk about the experience and confirm everything they just said to. So they went. Okay, so what are you going to do in this situation? Well, not much. Next morning, they go back to work at the shipyard. Now, they had talked to the sheriff, (laughs) and and I believe the sheriff's last name was Diamond. Um, Sheriff Diamond. They had said, now, please, whatever you do, do not let anyone. They they had asked, they said to the sheriff, listen, we just want to tell you we have no interest in this story getting out whatsoever. And the next day at work, Charles Hickson gets a call from the sheriff's office. He says, uh, my, uh, my station is surrounded by reporters. Somehow this story got out. Mm-hmm. And Charles Hickson said, well, who in your department called them? Because we didn't call anybody. And he said, it wasn't us. Um, and the boss, uh, um, Charles's boss overheard him on the phone. And he goes, what's going on? And Charles calls Calvin in, and they tell the boss their story. And the boss was like... We're going to need the day off. Yeah, no (laughs) shit. He was like, well, it sounds like you guys need to get a lawyer. So he got the... um, He brought in the the shipyard's lawyer, this guy, uh, Caligno, what's his name? Um, Played by Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah. So the boss is Johnny Walker, (laughs) which is amazing. And then they... (laughs) um, And then Joe Caligno was the attorney. And they told the story to the attorney, and one of the things that Charles said was he was really scared if they had been exposed to radiation. Mm. So Mm. the the lawyer contacted Keesler again, the Air Force Base, and he told them, well, now, you know, I'm a lawyer, I'm representing them. Uh, we need to find out, they can, can you test them for radiation exposure? Which they did, and I don't think anything came up, but when they went into the Air Force Base, this is all happening within, like, the same 24-hour period. The Air Force 
suddenly was interested, and High Command came in and interviewed them for a couple hours as well. And they told their story. Now, this started going around past Kagula, and um, J. Allen Hynek heard the story, uh, and he was uh, at the Center for UFO Studies at the time. And then James Harder from the Aerial Phenomenon Research Organization, um, APRO, they both came to interview them. And James Hardner had initially tried to get uh, um, Charles Hickson hypnotized for to see what happened, to oh, so they could get better. Yeah. And I guess that attempt, that initial attempt, was unsuccessful. But later, some murky details came out. But we really didn't don't have a big hypno therapy they pretty much kind of remember everything that happened mm-hmm. for the most part there wasn't a lot of missing time here right because when they got back by the time they, they, they like the abduction happened at 9 p.m and they were at the sheriff's station i think by like 10 10 30 so they weren't gone that long was, they said about 20 minutes so Heineck interviewed them and he uh, like i stated earlier he said this was a he felt a very genuine and compelling case he came out of it certain that they had had a real to them experience that there was something going on with this encounter now charles hickson went on to talk about this he sort of became part of the ufo community he went on to co-write a book about it called contact at pascagoula um i believe that's the name of it um he did a um he would do talks he even edited or produced a a documentary like tv sort of low budget documentary about the incident and mm. about other abductions um so he really went on to become an advocate for for this case and really became a believer in ufos and an expert very on the subject very salt yeah. of the earth grounded grandfatherly guy you know not a sensationalistic dude at all um, and he passed away at age 80, I believe, in 2011. Now, um, Calvin Parker Jr., however, he wanted nothing to do with the spotlight. He was a very religious guy. They think they both were, but Calvin Parker more so, I think, came from a more Bible background. And he was terrified and traumatized by it. He was admitted to a hospital for nervous breakdown, I think, within oh, weeks of no. this happening. He <gasps> suffered a few... He suffered, like, PTSD from it. Um, he uh, went into the... Ho- he was hospitalized a few times over his life. Um, and it's strange in... Uh, uh, he didn't really start talking about it until about 40 years later. And... He started doing interviews in you know 2013, and um, he admitted that um, he had had subsequent encounters. Oh no! And he interpreted them as from a more biblical point of view, and his story did change a little bit. That's the one weird thing is he later said, "Well, I wasn't passed out the whole time." I he said he saw a beautiful woman in the ship. And then later was abducted by the same ship later in his life. And really? then the beautiful wo- woman told him that she was from a race that that um, that uh, worshipped the same God as we do, the same Christian God. Oh, that's oh, why. Okay. And that, um, and I, I don't know what this was. You know, obviously he had some, some mental breakdowns stuff. from this stuff. So, and and that she wanted she they she came from a race that. Um, couldn't really be part of the human race because they were, we were so fixated on war and violence. I mean, but it makes you wonder if they just interpreted different things through their own filters. Might, you know? might be. I mean, he says in the transcripts, he goes, oh, God, I don't know what. Help me, God. I know there's a God up there. Like, he was very religious about it from the yeah. beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has said, I'm not so sure if they weren't aliens, but demons. You mm. know, So he had almost this more like... Medieval, spiritual. medieval yeah. spiritual point of view about it. Yeah, okay. Um, and that is pretty much the encounter. Now, Charles Hickson's story never changed. There's strange noises happening. That was weird. Ice machine? Ice machine. Tree? Aliens? That was the ice. Demons? That's the ice. Yeah. Yeah, it's the ice machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's never made that sound before, though. That's a weird sound. Um. Wow, okay. Now, <laughs> there were some other witnesses uh, that came forward. In 2001, a retired Navy Chief Petty Officer, Mike uh, Cataldo, revealed that he saw unusual UFO, uh, an object that looked like a tambourine mm. with orange uh, or small flashing lights, maybe orange, um, on that night 
fly down Route 90 on his way as he was going from Pascagoula to Ocean Springs. Mm. So there's at least one corroborating witness of seeing a UFO in the sky at that time, an unidentified object. Now, Rolling Stone did a story on this at one point, and there was a couple skeptical points that came up. One, which was where the abduction point took place was well within view of two 24-hour toll booths, and nobody there saw anything. And was within range of the um, shipyard's security cameras, which also didn't pick up anything. But, mm. you know, who knows? Uh, but that is the case of the Pascagoula abduction. And it is a, it's a weird one. These guys look like they like turnip people. They're very I love that. Yeah. creatures. I wanted to say, um, after uh, doing movie night and watching two movies that we watched... Um, Oh, Legend of Boggy Creek. No, no, communion. communion, communion, and the other one, which what was it? Legend of Boggy Creek. No, we watched a third one, right? No. Oh, okay, we, maybe we watch. We watched. We watch a movie here yeah. also. Regularly. Anyway, th- this concept that the aliens are being uh, like wearing a costume mm-hmm. is really intriguing. Mm-hmm. I love that wearing idea. Some kind of type of mask. Yeah, because I've always kind of thought about aliens, and I'm like, God. If there are so is if there's life on other planets and it's like so many light years away, I'm doubting that they would look anything even remotely like us and have appendages. They might be light beings. They might be free floating consciousness. They might. Uh, my favorite um, movie that I feel like depicts what aliens could and might be like is uh, the newest Arrival that came mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. because. Why would they? Why would they look anything like us? Why would they interact anything like us? Why would they have language like us? And this concept that they're that they are wearing costumes, maybe or coverings, or I like that or, much more. Or than, projecting some sort of psychic yeah. imagery that covers the way they look. I mean, like yes. um, the end of. Did you ever see Contact with Jodie Foster? No, I haven't seen that one. You should watch that. Yeah. I won't spoil it for you, but that that idea comes up in that as well. Um, it's closest to, in terms of vibe, it's closest to Arrival. Arrival is very much in the in sort of the the neighborhood of the movie Contact. Um, I would say the one thing that might explain why they may look something like us is if we are descendants of them, if oh. our DNA was actually borrowed from them the and link. mixed with something here on Earth to make us or mm-hmm. ancestors. Or that's mm-hmm. what I mean. Yeah, well, that's, descendants or oh, okay. I thought it, you like. They created us, and we'd be descendants. But or if we're just them in the past, that too. Yeah. But but I meant specifically that they created us. That that we are their descendants. Uh, genetic. They're we're their genetic. The children. alien monkey genetic. Yeah. Jacques yeah. Vallée makes that same point that there's some type of control mechanism that that seems to be able to. Um, change the the appearance of whatever these things are like on the cover of his uh, seminal work passport to magonia you see that alien gray holding up a few different masks one of the goblin one of the the red devil and one and of then, the fairy I and think. one of yeah and it's yeah. like and he makes that point too that these things you know they 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 change shape they change appearance you know um and that it's all is somehow yeah. related, you know. Yeah, and, and to to riff off that a little bit, how is that like any different than we change our clothing every day to something that's interpreting something they've never seen before? Sure. Maybe style or like yeah. mm-hmm. extraterrestrial fashion plays into that, where they're you know they're no, changing totally. their identity. Alien grays are out. They're... Reptilians are in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> Reptilians are the new black. Well, yeah. I, and I, I know I know I've said this <laughs> before, but I, I remember thinking about back to that that thing i saw in my window and it was just so on the nose red devilish it was like and then you, and then i saw on the cover of that book it, he, he uses that same imagery like the devil with the same horns same with me on and that i and i go and i and i window. think to my and i think to myself what makes more sense that the that the devil shows up at my window or some sort of you know alien in you know in in mask as the devil, you know. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, I'll t- the latter makes more sense. I to think me. it was the devil. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's weird shit. I mean, I think that could that to me helps to rationalize the whole idea and concept of UFOs and aliens and like extraterrestrials, and it helps like solidify that it could be more plausible. The idea that it's that they're shape shifting or that they're 
that they don't assume a shape all the time and that's like why everyone sees something different it's and, true it's like they're playing with us whatever they are yeah you know? or or they're doing something that we don't even have the comprehension to like even understand like we wouldn't even we don't have context for what they're doing when they shape shift or so we're running out of time usually yeah. we cut to break before we ask this question but we want to since we're already kind of talking about it yeah exactly ask you, what the hell was that what do you think at the end of the day yeah. if you had to go well i heard the story i think it was this what is it dude i mean i i based on my own personal experience i feel like probably it happened to them Feel like I have, which is also kind of makes me jealous because I'm like, dude, what about me? Why did I get abducted? So close to gray, wrinkly, <laughs> elephant skin, lobster claw guys. Yeah, and they oh didn't even God. come out on the ship. They didn't even they, talk to me. They didn't even touch me. Oh and God. I was like fully prepared for it. I was having an existential crisis and everything, and they didn't I mean, even come out. Oh, Jesus, that's if you're gonna do it, just do it. Yeah, exactly. No, I think probably yeah, totally. And to like to you know probably it happened and. Um, I think that what they witnessed, which sounds honestly like so silly and, and funny, the turnip man with elephant skin. Um, they look like something out of like Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah that's totally. I love that. I want to like draw it later. But um, I think that probably what that what that was is like just another example of some extraterrestrials trying to either conceal their identity or maybe it's like what that is to them is us in like astronaut astronaut costumes or they you know were I mean? yeah they could have been suits or they could have been protective gear they from could the have been drones. Drones. drones i mean they yeah. could have been some kind of biological or mechanical drone. yeah they could be i want to read you something here real quick so this is from jacques valet and eric w davis um everything works as if uaps were the product of a technology that integrates physical and psychic phenomena and primarily affects cultural variables in our society through manipulation of physiological and psychological parameters in the witnesses. And it also goes on to say, this single statement can be developed as follows. The phenomenon is the product of a technology. During the observation, the UAP is a real physical material object. However, it appears to use either very clever deception or very advanced physical principles, resulting in the effects we have called anti-physical, which must eventually be mm. reconciled with the laws of physics. So, I mean, you know, m making a strong case for, uh, you know, these things are definitely able to take on a manipulation of their own, you know, that will work with the observer. Right. And, and that might that might have a little bit to do with why these two guys observed different things. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Very strange. Like a, yeah, super strange. A, another level of the ability to manipulate reality. Mm hmm. Whether it's uh, technological or... It's true, and it says the technology triggers psychic effects either purposely or as a side effect of its manifestations. Yeah. These consciousness phenomena are now too common to be ignored or relegated to the category of exaggerated or ill-observed facts. Mm -hmm. All yeah. of us who have investigated close-range sightings have become familiar with these effects. And that was from Valet yeah. and Davis, Physics of High Strangeness. That's what I'm saying. It's so much more abstract than the way that you think it is. Like, if you look at any instance of human life, like, what the hell are we doing right now? We're talking into these weird things. If some being were to come in here and, like, see us all sitting around performing some religious ceremony of speaking to one or another. Or, like, it's like Nova's sitting right here. Yeah, he has what's no he, fucking concept of what's going on. What's but he, he doing? Yeah. He has a... He knows, but yet yeah. it's a conscious being. I mean, yeah, it's a, I always think yeah. when I'm on stage, I didn't, if I didn't someone, mean to call you an idiot, but <laughs> you're not you're an the idiot. smartest I boy, you're a good boy. Just That's saying, what I'm saying. Is like every you know everything. Every time I go on stage, for example, as an artist, I have this thought in my head where I'm like, okay, if someone were to come down from outer space with no concept or con on context for like what I'm doing here and see me just shouting as, at like a bunch of other beings like me, yeah. what would they interpret it as? Would they interpret it as like a religious ceremony? or i'm like brainwashing them yeah, or some, like, like weird object i'm like swinging an object around You're, with my fingers right. and, manipulating electricity yeah. and magnetism as, as, am, I the, sound am i the queen of this universe who knows yeah. you oh, know girl, what i mean you are the queen of as terence mckenna says making tiny mouth noises <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, love, I love that it's yeah great. what's that Oh, he's just described how how odd, like you were just saying, yeah. you know, like we're talking. what this thing called communication really is. It's just small little 
uh, mouth movements and yeah. making funny noises. Totally. Um, well, I.H, we, we anyway, that was a great up, story. Unfortunately, I got a good. Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, well, thank you for being our first yeah, guest who, so who have seen yeah. a UFO uh, up close and personal. I've seen it. Um, that, Grace, where can people find you should you want to be found? Oh, yes. I am on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, all at Grace Mitchell. Grace Mitchell, M I T C H. Where can we hear your music? Um, Spotify. Apple Music, iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, all of the things. Awesome. Stream that shit. Cool. Yeah, Great. It's really good. You should listen to it. Yeah, um, listen to yeah. it. Well, what we'll do is right after this, we'll close out with one of your songs. If you want to put it, close out, we'll play a, play a song. Really? Yeah. Why don't you? Absolutely. Uh, totally. Do you have one off the top of your head you think you'd like to play? Oh, am I? I'm, no, not oh, play a lot, but oh, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll put, we'll oh, put, yeah, the, yeah, put yeah. a track play, on to close out with. This is my song called No Low. Great. Awesome. All right. And uh, I want to thank all of you guys listening. I want to thank Riley Bray. I want to thank Sun Eaters for our theme song from the upcoming track, Come Along. I want to thank my co-host, Bryce Johnson. You can find him on all the social media, at Bryce Johnson, or Bryce O. Johnson, Mr. Bryce Johnson. I'm McMills, Riley's Trash Bag Hashtag. You can find Bigfoot Collectors Club and all the social media outlets. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of the BCC. We love you guys. See and you then. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. And Grace will take us out. I'm changing my song. It's going to be Kids Ain't All Right. Oh. Kids Ain't All Right. Good okay. choice.